So Monty Williams has been released. Monty Williams has been relieved of his duties and they have moved on from Monty Williams. Um, I was not expecting this move to happen, especially after they moved on from Troy Weaver. I wasn't expecting Monty to be let go. I thought they were going to move forward with him because originally the thought process was that, you know, Monty Williams could have been fired early. There was an article that came out originally saying that and then it didn't happen. So what did happen was Troy Weaver was let go, which signaled to me and to King that, okay, they're going to try to give Monty credit based off of his, his resume, etc. I thought they were going to move forward with Monty and they did not. So I got to give credit to Tom Gores. I understand he's a billionaire. I get it. Right. But still 78 million is 78 million. Monty Williams was slated to be paid 78 million over the next six years, six years. Right. So after this season, he's still up for $60 million, right? Five years. So the Pistons are completely just moving on, eating that contract and moving on. So I have to give Tom Gores credit for that. I got to give him credit for that because everybody knows I've been hard on Tom Gores from a basketball standpoint, right? Everybody knows that it's, it's, it's well documented that I've not been a big, a big fan of how he's done things here basketball wise, but I got to give him, I got to give him credit. I have to, because now it shows that he's willing to do what's best for the basketball team and not just focus completely on the community as he's talked about before. It's, it shows either that or it shows me that Trajan Langdon is, is not playing around. You know, it looks like maybe he's not playing around. Like, look, you hired me here. Let me do my job. And that's all we asked for is for Trajan to have an opportunity to do the job that he was hired to do the same way we wanted to give the opportunity to Troy. This is what's kind of perplexing to me. We all know that Monty Williams was not Troy Weaver's guy, right? That was not his guy. So why would you fire Troy Weaver who didn't want Monty Williams? And then fired the coach that Troy Weaver also didn't want. You fired Troy Weaver, who didn't want Monty Williams, just to fire Monty Williams, who Troy Weaver didn't want to begin with. So this whole season was in large part based on what Monty Williams did. And he didn't want him anyway. And now Monty's gone. It's just kind of strange to me that it played out that way. It seemed like either Troy would have stayed and Monty would have went. Or Monty would have stayed and Troy would have went because those two were not aligned. We all know that Troy Weaver had much more interest in guys like Kevin Ollie. So it's, it's just kind of strange to me <laughs> that it played out the way it did in the order of events that it played out. It's kind of like, why don't you just keep Troy around then? Not saying that we should or shouldn't. I'm just saying the way it happened was strange. At the end of the day, I'm glad that decisions are being made to better this team i personally don't have anything against monty williams but i don't feel that he was fully invested i don't think any fan any pistons fan would honestly say that they felt that monty williams was fully invested into this team i don't think anybody would say that and i think one huge indicator of that was what he said himself at his presser he literally when asked what the motivation to come here was one of the first things he said was money he said the money and that was a brutally honest answer i appreciate the honesty but that's not the answer you give at your opening at, at your presser when you're being introduced as coach of this team for the next six years you don't say the money was one of the biggest indicators for why you're here because now people are going to watch every single thing that you do and see if that is reflective of what you said about the money if you slip up if you show you don't care if you're on the sideline not showing emotion, if we don't see adjustments being made mid-game, mid-season, and you got guys like Killian Hayes starting over Jaden Ivey, it, it, may, it makes you wonder what why you're here. It makes you wonder where your, where your head is. It makes you wonder where your thought process is, especially when he initially declined the offer that was offered by Tom Doris, right? And then he was offered more money, and that changed his mind. When that changed his mind, that signaled a red flag to me. I, mean, I get it, right? Money is like everybody, everybody's trying to get the bat. But that was a huge indicator of why he wanted to come here. There was no true investment for him. There was no true motivator for him outside of that money to be here. And he said that by his act, with his actions by initially turning down the offer. 
So throwing more money at him is not going to incentivize him to want to coach this team better. He didn't want to be here to begin with. So now you got to look at why he's actually accepting the position. And that was my biggest issue. So I got to give Tom Gore's credit because he cleaned up his own mess. He cleaned up his mess. We had to deal with it for a year, for a season, right? But he cleaned it up. I think he realized, or he was helped to realize, maybe by the president, that maybe Monty wasn't here for the right reasons, right? Or maybe he just didn't fit, you know? And I honestly want a coach now who is going to have the same mindset as our young players. I almost don't even want an established coach. We just tried that, right? I want somebody who has a chip on their shoulder. I want somebody who is overlooked. I want somebody who can relate to the players as far as started from the bottom, now we're here. If that makes sense. That's what I want. Somebody who matches that energy. Oh, you guys have been overlooked too? So have I. Let's go prove everybody wrong. That's what I want. Somebody who, they don't necessarily have to have roots here in Detroit, but they have to embody what we represent, man. Hard, tough nose defense, playing hard, playing for each other, having an identity. Last season, we had no identity. And I'm not just saying that because we won 14 games. What was our identity last season? What could we hang our hat on last season? It wasn't much. It wasn't much of anything we had to hang our hat on as a team. Who are we as a team? You could always look back at the bad boys. You could look at the going to work teams. You knew who they were. They knew who they were. Most importantly, they knew what they represented. And they were confident in that. The bad boys were tough, beat you up, but they played great. They played together. They played for each other. They played hard. They played 48 minutes. Going to work pistons, same thing. They played for each other. Tough nose defense, not the same quite physicality because they wouldn't allow it as they did back in the 80s and 90s, right? But they embodied that same thing. Every time we've been successful, every pistons regime, every pistons era that we've had that's been successful, had an identity. We got to get back to that. And I think this is the first step in getting back to that. You look at a guy like a Kevin Nolly, for example, or even a Darvin Ham, for example. It's not particularly guys so I'm saying we should go out and get for sure, but it has to match the energy. It has to match what we represent. Kevin Nolly is a hard-nosed coach. He played with Allen Iverson. He wasn't a star. He was a defensive guy. He was on that 2001 team that went to the finals against the Lakers when they lost. He's a tough guy. He preaches defense. He preaches playing hard. He coached Star Thompson as well at OTE. That was his coach. He won a national title with, he, with UConn, right? Before Hurley, right? He won a title with them, beating Michigan State en route to get there. He knows how to win. He knows how to win. And he's a tough coach. Someone who can really help these guys and get them motivated and really make them believe. Because if the coach doesn't believe, if the coach doesn't seem like he's invested, the players are not going to be it either. It's just not going to happen, right? So that's where it needs to start. If it's a Kevin Ali, if it's a Darvin Ham, whoever fits that mold. I don't want it to be somebody who's established, who's already accomplished a lot, who's already decorated in the league. Because what reason would they have to come here? Think about it. If they've already established themselves and they've already been to the mountaintop and they've already won, you could say, sure, they could help our guys get to the mountaintop. But what is their incentive for being here? You don't find a lot of coaches who are established and who have won who want to come to a situation where the weather isn't great and the team stinks. What other motivation, incentive, other than money, is going to bring them here? That's the exact situation we have with Monty Williams. I don't want that anymore. I want a guy who's going to come in who's about basketball, who's going to come in who's about winning. And that's all they care about. No egos, no ulterior motives, no nothing. Now listen, I'm not blaming Monty Williams for taking the money. He didn't steal it. He didn't in a sense, but they offered it to him. He turned it down. They offered him. So like, I mean, that's not on him. That's, that's on Tom Gores to recognize what to look for when you're hiring a coach and not to undermine the GM who you hired to do the job, to do the job, right? So that is a whiff on their part, on his part. So I'm happy to see that he's righting the wrong. I'm happy to see that Trajan Langdon is being given an opportunity 
to do his job. And I'm happy to see that the Pistons are not afraid to make splashes and necessary moves to move forward. Mr. E, this is a good point. Um, James Edwards saying the Vincent hire wasn't exactly an indicator. Monty was staying, was staying as a was a huge red flag. That was another reason why I thought that um, Monty was going to stay because of the New Orleans connection that he had with uh, Fred Vincent, the new assistant coach. They were together before New Orleans, so I thought that was a signal that Monty is bringing his guys now. They moved on from Troy Weaver and they decided to keep Monty. But he's bringing him in his guys now. But once it said that he wasn't an indicator, Mr. E, exactly. Once James Edwards, shout out to James Edwards. Once he said that that hire wasn't an indicator, that Monty was staying, they didn't have to say that. You know what I mean? That, they didn't have to make that point. But when they said that, I also thought, well, that's interesting. Why would they say that? What reason? Because everything else, would, it wouldn't make sense if that was the case. That would just be the natural thought progression, right? Okay, Monty Troy was gone. Monty's still here. Monty's coach from New Orleans is coming with him. You're thinking Monty's going to be here. That's why this caught me completely off guard. Monty Williams is out as the head coach. We don't know yet who is going to be hired. We don't know who the potential candidates are yet. None of that stuff has been solidified yet. So we are waiting to hear from Cajun Landon. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a presser pretty soon regarding this news. So we will wait for that. So we'll see. I mean, it's, it's going to be it's going to be very, very interesting over the next couple of days, but I am really happy to be honest. And there's nothing against Monty Williams. Man. If this was Monty Williams from even just a few, a few years ago, maybe. But once again, the fit, the fit, it was just not there. Even when he first came here, guys, I was happy because of the name. I'm not going to lie to you. I was happy because of the name. I was happy because of what he had accomplished out West, right? The way he was able to Take that young Phoenix Suns team. And I remember the bubble season. They didn't make the playoffs, but I think they won the last seven or eight games in a row. That was the season when Devin Booker made that shot over Kawhi Leonard and Paul George at the same time, right? That was then. They didn't make the playoffs that season. The very next year, they go to the finals in 2021, right? So he that was a huge change, right? He, he turned that thing around. But I mean, having CP3 and Devin Booker also helped too. Jerry Stackhouse, I'm not mad at that either. Anybody who, yes, see anybody who has ties to the city or anybody who has a chip on their shoulder who embodies what we embody. That's it, that's that's all I want. One of those two things or both. <laughs> give me both of those things and we're great. You know, give me somebody who is up and coming, who's kind of unproven, diamond in the rough. Now, obviously that's, you know, we're asking for a, a perfect situation. Everybody's looking for that coach they don't have to pay that coach that much but i'm looking for that kind of guy shows you all the money can't yet and listen i don't want to say that monty williams doesn't have heart i'm not going to sit up here and act like monty williams isn't an nba coach i think the situation that he had in phoenix was a great situation for him right every coach is not able to coach any type of team you know every coach some coaches are you know Coaches like Phil Jackson, who once they have the pieces, they never lose, right? And you have coaches the opposite, like Larry Brown, who take things that are in shambles and builds them up, right? And puts together a winning product and then gets bored and leaves and finds another project to start on. You know, like you have different types of coaches. That's why you can't just look at what X coach did with another team and expect it to translate. It just doesn't work like that. You got to look at the man. You got to look at his mentality. You have to look at his motivation. What is his motivation? Mark Jackson will be it. That would be a dream. I would absolutely love to have Mark Jackson here. I don't, it's, it's still appalling to me that he has not had a coaching interview since Golden State. I know he's been maligned for, well, from what I heard, he had been maligned for pushing his religious beliefs on players or hinting at that or things like that if that's the case i don't think that's something that should prevent a coach from getting an interview 10 years after he put the foundation together for what golden state is now mark jackson doesn't have any championships as a player or a coach that's unfortunate he got there against the, the lakers in 2000 as a player and lost and then he helped build golden state before 
Steve Kirk took the reins over and transformed it into something else, right? To something even even better. But I have a hard time believing that Mark Jackson would not have won a championship with that team. I have a hard time just looking at what he did up to that point. It's amazing to me that he has not had an opportunity. I would love to have Mark Jackson or Sam Cassell. He's been an assistant coach now for a while. And I think he needs to be given an opportunity. Obviously, a Phil Handy would be nice. Um, I keep hearing Borrego. That's another name to look out for. I don't think JJ Redick is coming here. I think that's that's in the it's a done deal. He's gonna be at LA. Um, I think if JJ Redick does not go to LA, then you would look at Monty Williams uh, making that move over there, possibly. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at with the guys. I I'm, I'm happy overall. Not even just at the details of the move, as far as it being Monty specifically. I'm just more happy at the fact that this new regime is showing they're about business. They're showing they're about business. And it's showing, it's showing too that you are aware of what is going on here. You can't, in my opinion, you can't lose 28 straight games setting a record and not take a hard look at your coach. I understand the roster wasn't perfect, but we had a number one pick on our team last year. We had two number five picks on our team last year. We had number ten or number thirteen pick, I think, in Jalen Duran, which should have been a top five pick in any other draft, in my opinion. Right? We have talent. They're young, yes, but come on, bro. Fourteen games. Fourteen games. Dallas and Boston both almost individually won that many games in the playoffs. That's insane, right? We won fourteen regular season games. Boston just won sixteen playoff games. Dallas just won 13 playoff games. That's insane. So you can't not look at your coach when you have the type of talent that we have. And when you're setting historical records, infamous records, the way we did last season, you, you just can't do it. So I think that their willingness to look at that and say, okay, we got to, we got to make some changes now. I have to give him credit for that because he's realizing publicly that he made a mistake. He is realizing and recognizing he hasn't said it publicly, but him making the movie did last year only to eat $60 million this year, a year later, shows that he's saying to everyone, his players, the fans, the coaches, everybody, this is him saying, I messed up. I messed up. There's no other way to get around it. So for that, I give Tom Gore's credit. Right? It's a good first step. It's a good first step. Jason, absolutely. This is why we have not heard about a press conference yet. This is why. Because there were still moves made behind the scenes. There was still a lot of question, a lot up in the air about what was going to happen. Now that this move has been made, now I think we can really look at a potential press conference coming and future moves to come as well. So that's my take. This is a good day. This is a good day for Detroit. Once again, not because of the specific move, but just because of the willingness to make moves that are not easy, that are not easy on your pockets. This, this is a far cry from him saying, let's not mess it up. We're, things are going great. We're in the community. Let's not mess this thing up. Let's not get ahead of us. This is what he was saying when talking about the team. He was saying, Let's not get caught up in the wins and losses. We're doing a lot in the community. It's pretty good. And that had Pistons fans in an uproar because that has nothing to do with basketball. Now, let me be clear. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I do appreciate what Tom Gores has done in the community. He's done a lot in the community. But that's what I would expect from an ambassador of the city of Detroit. That's what I expect from somebody who has that title. I'm not expecting that to be the hallmark for my owner of my basketball team. That's the difference. If that was what he was doing in a different role outside of being an owner, great. We're all praising him. But what is the title? The title is the owner of the team. You have to give the resources to those you put in position to do their job effectively. And you cannot overrule them if you're hiring them to do the job that you hired them to do. You just can't. So it seems like Tom Gores is finally trying to get out of the way, or maybe Trajan Langdon was, maybe that was part of the conversation.
with Trajan Langdon and Tom Gordon. I mean, Trajan Langdon said, okay, how much control am I going to have? Am I going to be vetoed? Am I going to be overruled when there are decisions that I think we should make? Like Troy Weaver was. Who knows? Trajan may have known about that, about Troy Weaver not having the, op the opportunity to really make the moves he wanted to make. Who knows if Trajan Langdon could have talked to Troy Weaver before he took the job? We don't know. But I just hope that he's given the opportunity now and I hope that was part of the conversation with Mike, with Tom Gores. Let me do my job and get out of the way, respectfully. And it seems like that's what he's doing. So shout out to him, letting his guys do their jobs. So we're going to end it there, y'all. When we have more updates, we will keep it locked here with y'all. We will tap back in with y'all. Um, but for now, that's the news. Monty Williams is out as Pistons coach after one season of a six-year, $78 million deal. $60 million remaining on that contract that Tom Gores is willing to eat. And now we will look to see who we bring in for the next coach. We headed straight to the top in the north. I gotta face it.